Welcome to the Age Reversing Blueprint Podcast, where we discuss tools and tips to help you reverse your age naturally. Skewing younger, seeing more aggressive hair loss, but then of course, more recently with the pandemic, uh, it's like a uh, light speed acceleration of hair loss in so many people. I mean, I, I, I've treated personally over a thousand COVID related hair loss patients. And these are people either have been infected with COVID, vaccinated and not infected, or just simply locked down over time. And they noticed that whatever little bit of hair loss they were experiencing previously, dramatically accelerated. We have such a, an amazing guest and a real uh, pleasure to interview Dr. Alan Bauman, who is a full-time hair transplant surgeon who founded his medical practice, Bauman Medical in Boca Raton, Florida, right next to me, a stone throw. And he's treated over 30,000 patients and performed over 10,000 hair transplant procedures to date. He's compassionate patient center, and he has an individualized artistic approach to protecting, enhancing, and restoring the appearance and the health of the hair and the scalp. And is what sets him apart from non-specialists uh, non and other practitioners he moved to Boca Raton with his wife, Karen, and received his MD degree from New York Medical College, surgical residency training at Mount Sinai and Beth Israel Medical Center in Manhattan, and his hair transplant fellowship training in New York. Uh, Alan, I could go on and on, but I want to spend time on getting into the good. So thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you, Joel. It's really a pleasure. It's great to be here with you. Uh, more so on my side, Alan, because uh, I know that you are definitely a leader. I followed your career, as I told you, when I met you many, many years ago when you were on the other side of town. And I'm just so happy to get you on the, on the podcast today. What we always start with is, is your own journey and, and how you got into not just um, th this field of specialty in, in medicine, but how it correlates or corresponds with your own health journey. So, and it's made a sort of a, um, a better approach to, to healthcare, not just for the patient, but for yourself. So maybe sort of inundate our listeners with uh, your journey. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you ask my grandmother when she was alive, you know, when did Alan decide he wanted to go to medical school? She probably would have said the day he was born. So, you know, I just had another patient here in the practice who said he was born with a stethoscope in his hand. And so I don't know if it was just uh, preordained like that, but it was a good thing. Probably I was okay at science and math and biology and all of that. Um, but I didn't really know much about what kind of medicine I wanted to practice until I had the opportunity to watch surgery. And my first mentor was a plastic surgeon and he invited me to come and watch surgery. Remember, this is like in the 1980s before Discovery Channel, before YouTube. So everything was kind of behind closed doors and a mystery to me until I got a chance to literally look over his shoulder and see surgery in action. And I knew immediately that that's what I wanted to do. I was pretty good with my hands. I always like was a tinkerer in that way, fixer, fix, fixing things. And so he was a very prominent plastic surgeon. And I always thought I'd follow in his footsteps doing cosmetic surgery and plastic surgery. At least maybe that's kind of where I started. And so through my general surgery internship and residency training, I, that's where I thought I was going to be. I I stuck with him and, and shadowed him over many years, but it wasn't until I met a hair transplant patient that I even think about hair transplantation. I mean, normally we would never see that in plastic surgery. And this patient just happened to be coming in for something else. He's in the hospital. I'm being the good resident, taking a medical history. And in there, it said hair transplant. And I'm looking at him trying to figure out, you know, like where his hair was transplanted because it, I was assuming it was going to be pluggy or weird looking, you know, just about everybody else would think the same thing in the mid 1990s. And so we got into this kind of casual conversation at first about his hair and he was pretty excited um, to, you know, discover that I wasn't unable, I was unable to detect that he had had a hair transplant. And we began this conversation really from a layman's point of view, why he went to the doctor he went to and, and so forth. And I, thought that that was so interesting about the microsurgical techniques and the artistry he described in terms of the restoration. But what I remember most about that conversation was the impact that the hair restoration had on him because it's really the emotional component. And he described how his life changed professionally and socially after getting his hair restored. And so I kind of thought at that time, maybe I should look into this. And it, was, you know, it wasn't a, um, a complete 180 turnaround. It was just a small step in that direction that eventually led me down the path of learning hair restoration techniques and technologies that were really just coming of age microsurgically to create an undetectable look. 
And I was super excited about that and thought I could bring that to the world of plastic surgery. And eventually I got so far down the road on the hair transplant with another mentor, uh, having traveled and visited a number of different clinics nationally and internationally that I just decided to do hair transplants full time. And so that was more than 25 years ago. Uh, after my training and fellowship in hair transplant surgery, I moved to Boca Raton, Florida. Um, you know, fast forward, as you said, I've treated 30,000 patients in over 25 years. Today, we're up to over 13,000 hair transplant procedures and such. Um, but my own health journey uh, is a little bit different. You know, it wasn't until I was hitting middle age and noticing, because I do work pretty hard. I, you know, I, I get up at five every day and I'm in surgery here in the office probably by six or seven every day. Uh, weekdays. And so I have a pretty demanding schedule. And uh, about 15 years ago, I noticed that my, uh, maybe my, my, my physical stamina wasn't the same mental stamina was a little bit different. My waistline was certainly increasing. And uh, I was invited to a ski trip and I hadn't skied in like 10 years. And so I kind of knew that I had to sort of make a change. And in that beginning phase, I started to take a small step again, not a 180, but small steps into the right direction of fitness and health. Um, I had already been a member of the American Academy of Anti-Aging since uh, the 1990s. So I was already familiar with functional medicine and the approaches to longevity that really um, were not even called longevity up until just more recently. And so uh, I started changing my diet, my nutrition, my, my time window for eating. I started to focus more on my sleep, my exercise regimen. Again, it sounds like all these things changed immediately, but it's been a 10-year journey. And that has led me also... Uh, at the same time, to be more mindful of my patient's metabolic situations. And so looking at uh, hair loss and hair follicles as a, a, a very, very strong barometer of health, because it's one of the most highly metabolic cell populations in the body, that led us to identify a lot of metabolic issues, autoimmune issues, dietary issues, lifestyle problems, everything from stress and you name it, that affect the hair follicle. And eventually to where we are today, developing an entire functional medicine program within Bauman Medical with several different experts, including experts in hormone optimization, endocrinology, fitness and nutrition, to be able to take care of those patients that need that little piece of extra wellness uh, to just get them optimized, if you will. And then now to extend that into lifespan and health span. So it's been a pretty interesting journey. Um, the Bauman Performance Program is really what I you know, just told you about, and that's launched, launched just recently. So uh, it's been very, very well received by my patient population. They're super excited about it. And they know about my own biohacking journey, if you want to call it that. And so uh, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been very cool to, uh, to perform hair transplantation for 25 years, still performing hair transplants every day, and then also to offer this added, uh, you know, lifestyle medicine, concierge medicine program in the practice right here under our, our roof, if you will, at the headquarters in Boca Raton, Florida. No, I love it. Thank you for taking us down the uh, trip down memory lane. It's kind of like a, a kid in the candy store where he discover or the caveman discovers fire when you saw the, the whole hair restoration, especially what resonates with me, Alan, is the how life-changing it was, because in different medical fields, sometimes you don't get to see the outcome or the continuity of care. So it kind of fits all the things that perhaps you were looking for. And I would say even the new, uh, the, the program on longevity isn't just for a unique percentage of the people you're seeing, it, it ultimately could be applied to all of them so that their um, out outcomes are, are that much more, uh, I guess, substantiated or, or received. The question I would have yeah. for you is, how much would you say the problem of hair loss or follicle health or restoration has accelerated or have increased incidence over the years because of the toxic, stressful, environmental, epigenetic factors that sort of overlap with the genetic blueprint, if you will. Do you see that that's really accelerated over the years or stayed the same? What, what oh, do you think? Abso yeah, absolutely accelerating. I mean, there were signs and symptoms of this even 10, 15 years ago in the practice that we were seeing younger patients with more aggressive hair loss from all over the world, actually. And so is it the level of stress? Is it our metabolic health? Is it our nutritional, you know, uh, status that, you know, our, our, is our food, you know, denutrified? Are we not getting enough fuel? What's going on? And uh, I think it's a confluence of a lot of different things. Is it 
you know, hormone triggers or, uh, you know, in our environment and in our, uh, in the products that we come in contact with that could be dysregulating our health. And, and so uh, we've definitely seen an acceleration. So that was like over a decade ago uh, where the patients were skewing younger, seeing more aggressive hair loss. But then of course, more recently with the pandemic, uh, it's like a uh, light speed acceleration of hair loss in so many people. I mean, I, I, I've treated personally over a thousand COVID related hair loss patients. And these are people either have been infected with COVID, vaccinated and not infected, or just simply locked down over time. And they noticed that whatever little bit of hair loss they were experiencing previously, dramatically accelerated, whether it was a massive shedding or what we call telogen effluvium, uh, and then eventually looking at their accelerated male or female pattern of hair loss or autoimmune issues, women and men that we had basically treated and um, put into remission, alopecia conditions, autoimmune conditions of the scalp. And then all of a sudden they've gone through this process. Again, is it the stress? Is it the COVID? Is it the vaccination? Is it you know something that's going on with the microcirculation or uh, their immune response? I don't know that all the answers. I just can tell you clinically, it's exploded. And so um, the demand for hair restoration treatments and procedures uh, is just been unbelievable. And uh, it's evidenced in the growth of the practice, as well as the number of practitioners that come to me who want to add hair loss treatments and services, uh, you know, to their repertoire. And we, and we do those teachings and trainings, you know, maybe not necessarily hair transplants, unless someone's looking to learn like an eyelash transplant or something new and different than they're already doing. But I'm talking about just the, um, you know, medical practitioners who realize that they're seeing a lot more hair loss out there and they want to know what to say and what to do and to be able to at least be like the, the first responder, if you will, maybe not necessarily the cardiothoracic surgeon for trauma, but, you know, but be the first responder to, to like, you know, stop the bleeding, so to speak, with the hair loss situation. And then, you know, have also a reference and a resource for quality prescription items, um, medical devices, treatments and procedures, or even just advice, you know, and so we call that the hair coach program for professionals, beauty professionals, uh, uh, medical professionals and surgeons and everybody in between. And of course, the general public, too. So, yeah, it's, it's been unbelievable to see the acceleration of hair loss uh, over the past couple of years. And then the last thing I would just add to that is the zoom and boom. I mean, here we are on a podcast. Right. And but if you're locked down and you're out of the boardroom, the only way to connect with the boardroom again is to be virtualized. And so if you're on Zoom now, uh, the guy that, you know, woke up with his eyes bleary, maybe didn't even turn on the lights or comb his hair, you know, now he's in his office uh, under a bright light and, and a video screen, and he's looking at himself in the mirror or a woman looking at herself in the mirror, uh, well, I should say in the video mirror, and then noticing that maybe their skin or hair from here up is looking a little bit different, and they want to take some action. So it's kind of an interesting confluence of things that have occurred physically with the hair loss and also awareness of hair loss. Yeah, it's amazing to to sort of look on the inside of your journey, Alan, and, and see how excited and how every day brings a, a it's it's you almost know what you don't know. And it's always a time to learn how much all of the factors and a little bit of this, a little bit of that contribute to not just overall health, but in specifically hair follicle health. So maybe take us in on the inside and look over your own shoulder when you're assessing someone who's coming in with, with hair loss concerns and how you work them up and be able to pull apart all the different bunches of yarn that get, you know, I guess all tangled. What, how do you, how do you yeah. unlock that process? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not cliche to say that it's a holistic approach because a holistic approach to health and wellness and whether you're talking about your skin or your hair is really mandatory because we realize that everything is connected. And even though in medical school and training, you know, we were taught how to burn it out, suck it out, cut it out, you know, that's really not how the body works. And we really take a systems biology approach in many of these cases, just like, uh, you know, on the more consumer side, where we call it biohacking, it used to be just health and wellness. <laughs> um, but when a person comes in with a hair loss concern, obviously, I want to know what that concern is. And I know that hair is a very emotional organ. So before they call click or visit, you know, we already know that there's some emotion attached to it, or else they wouldn't be making that first action. So making sure that my uh, that the website and the email is responded to or the first phone call is responded to in a warm and compassionate way is really the first taste that a patient will have 
of what we do here at Bauman Medical. And, you know, my first line people have been with me for many, many, many years, and they're super highly trained. This is not like some receptionist or call center that we've got. I mean, these are people who have been with me in the practice for maybe a decade or more. Some of my front office people have been with me over 14 years. So that's the first most important thing. Um, so that they feel comfortable that, hey, we understand the situation emotionally first. And then when the patient comes in, we're definitely going to take a very detailed medical history and inventory, not just of their medications and previous surgeries and what they're being treated for, but also lifestyle factors. Because as I mentioned, we know that stress and nutrition, sleep-wake cycles, all of this can dysregulate the hair follicle and function for sure. And so we look at all of that. And then we're going to look at the scalp. And so from a distance, you know, does this does the scalp, is it receding in a hairline in a male patient? Is there loss of coverage? And for a woman, is there a change in texture or color? Uh, is she dealing with some kind of hair care regimen that's forcing her uh, to, to create damage to the hair fibers, right? The hair fiber is dead, but the follicle is what's alive, like a 3D printer producing the hair fiber. So we've got to have good nutrients and fuel for that. And then what is their hereditary tendency towards hair loss? So they have hair loss, male side, female side, men's uh, mom side, dad side, I should say, you know, in the family. Let's look at that genetic uh, history just in the, you know, we don't have to go to Facebook or the photo album, but we can find out from them, you know, who in their uh, blood relatives are dealing with hair thinning or hair loss. And then, of course, we can look even deeper, right? So we can do an AI-powered uh, measurement of the hair density in different areas of the scalp within minutes, quantify hair caliber and density down to the hair, hair to hair microscopy. And that will tell us a lot about what's going on at the level of the scalp and perform those baseline measurements so that we can track it over time. And then we're going to look at whether uh, we could also perform biomarker uh, testing. So it could be blood testing, hormone testing, could be... Um, you know, everything from iron to, to protein intake and so forth, iron levels of protein intake. Uh, we're going to look at maybe their DNA to see if they have a tendency towards hair loss or metabolic conditions or metabolic pathways that might influence hair loss and such. So those are some of the basics that we start with, you know, before we even get into any kind of therapies and treatments, it, it's a download. I mean, it's like, you know, up and download kind of situation where we're gathering all of this information. And that's why my consultations take about an hour or so. Uh, to really perform all these diagnostics and measurements. But I think it's really important that we're not just looking at whether does this patient need surgery or not. And I mean, I've, I've never been that way, to be honest, because I've always had preventative therapies in the treatment regimen since the day I opened the door in, you know, 1998, 1997. No, that's awesome. You so see a lot in the surgical field where the patient is the metaphorical nail and the doctor is the hammer and everyone gets the, the same approach, unfortunately, but specifically with what it is that you do, there's so many ins and outs and what have yous for you to be able to deliver the best recommendations and what works for the patient. One thing I would have to say, Alan, just as an aside, um, I've always been an admirer of your, your approach, the, your marketing, being ahead of the curve. I'm not just smoke, blowing smoke up your skirt, but um, success leaves clues. And given that you've had uh, your staff be around as long as they have, I guess the two-part question, I wasn't even ask, planning on asking you this, but where did you learn that? Uh, was that inherent? And secondly, was that driven from a, a, like a, a mission-based purpose that you guys kind of huddle around every day to be able to kind of get connected to why it is that you do this and everyone's on the same page? Really wasn't sort of anticipating that, but while I got you here today, yeah. where did that come from? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I wish I could point to one specific thing, but I can tell you that, you know, when I started my practice uh, 25 years ago, I didn't have any team members. I didn't have any staff. Uh, my wife was a is a teacher. She was teaching uh, at the time, and I said, "Listen, I'm opening that. We're opening this practice, and I need you to help me. We can't afford to have any staff." So you're answering. So she would answer the phones, and of course, I did the consultations and the surgery, and of course, the practice grew from there. And today, we have over 30 team members. Um, I think from the very beginning, you know, once we had a full-time team, having a mission and philosophy was super helpful. Uh, a number of years ago, we created a list of core values and that was created by the team. And so it's listed on the website. You can read about it. And I have a core leadership team that helps manage the practice. And so these are, I wouldn't say department heads, but they have, you know, some uh, good responsibilities in the practice, and they've been around a long time. And so those are the key players that help me, kind of the board of directors, if you will, but that's more like a leadership team. 
And in fact, uh, you know, I think just creating a culture that uh, I personally like to, I want to be in the facility. I know I'm going to spend a lot of time here when I built this office and I moved out of the original office, uh, maybe about almost 10 years ago. Um, I built a location that I wanted that I physically wanted to work in that I felt comfortable in. You know, I wanted to have a lot of natural light. I wanted it bright. I wanted it clean. I wanted it organized. And I think that the the culture kind of extends from the people that have been with us, because if you're not part of that, you know, team culture here, you kind of stick out like very quickly. And so you, you will not last. I mean, today you won't last through an orientation week. Um, years ago, you wouldn't last, you know, a week of employment if you really didn't fit the culture. So I've been very, very lucky and blessed with people who are passionate about what we do and how we change lives for the better every single day. And I've just continued to grow that practice, grow the practice using those core values. And um, today, you know, my HR director will put a person through a very rigorous uh, protocol of uh, questions and interviews and observations and things like that before they even get considered for a spot on the team. But, um, you know, we're always looking for good people. So if there is anybody out there who, you know, and maybe you don't know. Uh, that you're interested in hair loss or hair restoration or longevity or wellness, or maybe you have some inkling. And no matter what your background, uh, if you have the right attitude, um, then you might be a good candidate uh, to be a member of the Bauman medical team. And so I would encourage you to apply if there's someone out there. Interesting. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so we, we, do, I mean, I, we do a lot of team building stuff. No, it's great. I, I, I like that in that it also allows you to be the expert at what you do, you know, you get to focus in on the 5% of, uh, if you will, of what makes you special, and you can go deep down that versus, you know, going very wide, and, and spreading yourself too thin. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, as far as so let's say you've done the workup, and you're you're looking at your from the moment they call, they're getting supported, and you're hearing what their challenges are, and you're doing your workup, what would you say the uh, the next step is in that, or what's the most common uh, finding you you see, and what are the different avenues you go down from there? Sure. So one of the things that we ask about specifically is if they have any scalp health symptoms. So is their scalp itchy, flaky, burning? Is it dandruff? Do they have occasional uh, folliculitis or pimples on the scalp? Things like that. And do we uncover any of that during the examination process? Because I really think that scalp health is a, a very important foundation for good hair growth. And so I actually have an entire department called the trichology department. Trichologist on staff is a certified trichologist, cosmetologist, who's got extensive training in hair and scalp health. And so think of how uh, an esthetician might help a plastic surgeon prepare the skin and heal the skin around the time of surgery. A trichologist does the same for a hair restoration physician. And she has a very robust following. Um, she does what we call scalp makeovers. Uh, she can do everything from cranial prosthetic devices, fitting and cutting and such, and everything from uh, coloring and color and 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 cutting and such, uh, as well as the trichology aspects, which is really the kind of interesting science of the health of the scalp. So, I want to make sure that that's kind of you know uh, make sure that we identify that. But really, the most important thing to get any patient started off with is some preventative therapies. And so what are the things that we're going to do initially, you know, for a young guy with male pattern hair loss? Well, we're going to talk about pharmaceutical intervention, non-chemical treatments, maybe photoceutical, meaning uh, photobiomodulation or nutraceuticals, nutritional supplements and things like that. Um, and then dovetail that with maybe some regenerative treatments could be something, something autologous like PRP comes from your own body. Uh, there may be other therapies and treatments that we do in that regenerative medicine capacity, but we want to stabilize the hair loss process first. And so we always begin with that preventative aspect before we jump and run into some de degree of hair transplantation. Um, so if hair transplants needed, obviously those areas are going to be depleted of density, uh, either moderately or severely, they're going to need to be repopulated with permanent hairs. And so if it's necessary to do transplants, of course, we're going to talk about it, but we would never do a hair transplant if there's an ongoing active hair loss process. So we're going to do everything we can to put the brakes on that so that we can keep the hair that they have. And the good news is that there's a lot of effective treatments that are out there, uh, not just the uh, you know, over the counter or cloud pharmacy versions, but stuff that's a lot more sophisticated, you know, as we get into it, um, that can really help protect the hair follicle function. 
So I guess going from outside to inside, remember we talked about lifestyle and nutrition and those genetic risk factors. And then we're looking at the scalp health and then those preventative therapies, moving on into regenerative treatments, hair transplantation and things like that. Awesome. So it sounds like at the same time, there's a certain expectation of the patient as well, right? In terms of they have to be a in the in the front seat with you, right? In terms of you want to take over the steering wheel and help them uh, achieve their destination in a in a comfortable ride, but at the same time, they have to be able to take over the steering wheel when you get out of the the vehicle. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Are there ever yeah. times? <laughs> Alan, where it's not a good fit for you because you just don't have a magic wand and you can't just wave it and they're just going to get better and there's going to be a, a beanstalk at the end of the rainbow with a pot of gold. I mean, explain yeah. explain that a little bit. So I, I would say our relationship with patients is more of a navigator. So I'm the guy who's plotting the, the map, you know, oh, okay, you set the goal. I want to get from here to there. Well, first of all, let's see if it's possible. Are there any barriers in between here and there that we can't surmount? Uh, with the therapies or treatments that we have on hand. And then I'll plan the route. And so, you know, just like you were starting off a long journey or a road trip, um, you know, maybe you don't know all the turns that we're going to make. Maybe we don't know exactly where we're going to stop to go get gas, but I'm going to give you the, the, the guidelines and we're going to check in in 90 days. And we're going to see how is your compliance, your regimen, your adherence to the program. Are you having difficulties? Are the topical medications creating some irritation? Or are they, you know, funking up your hairstyle or something? And so sometimes it's a skin reaction, and sometimes it's just a user error, you know, and we need to kind of refine how we apply that treatment or modify it. And if something is, you know, you're applying the treatment 100% correctly, you're doing the right amount and frequency and all that, and we're still not getting the results that we would expect, we got to dig deeper. And then we've got to change gears or bolt on another kind of therapy to get you to your goal. Uh, maybe we need to look deeper. And so I know you're an expert in DNA, so we might do genetic testing to give us a more personalized precision approach. So what that does is it gives us insight into different metabolic pathways that might be influencing therapies or treatments. So it's very common. Patients come in, they say, you know what? I used Rogaine years ago and it didn't work. Well, okay. And it's certainly possible. Maybe it was how you applied it. Maybe it was the version that you used. Maybe it was how long you tried to use it for. It was not enough. Maybe you weren't even watching the areas that were improving, like the back of your scalp. Do you have a mirror that enables you to look at that area? How would you even know? But maybe you are sulfotransferase deficient or deficiency in activity of the enzyme that creates minoxidil sulfate in the skin from the minoxidil that comes out of the bottle. And so today we know if you're sulfotrans, if you have a low propensity or low activity of sulfotransferase, you're not likely to get a strong response from minoxidil out of the bottle. But the good news is that there's a lot of ways that we can boost that response. So, you know, sometimes an additive like tretinoin or something like that, a prescription version of minoxidil plus tretinoin would be penetrating better, activating better, and maybe give you a better result than that over-the-counter version. So immediately we can identify and kind of get a shortcut. And so we don't have to go around that barrier. We don't have to go over that barrier. We can go around that barrier of therapy or treatment if we did a genetic test, uh, you know, right off the bat for example. So many of our patients, they know that and they'll do genetic testing like even before they come into the office just to get a sense of what treatments they may or may not be responding to as well as a typical patient. So that's just yeah, one that's, example. No, it's great. I, I would even, you're, you're selling yourself short on the navigation component because it's almost like the AI navigation component where you punch in the data and it gives you all of the unique customized suggestions uh, and with that being said what if they're they're not local or do they have to come see you and what can they do on their own um, given the what you've just talked about yeah that's a great question so the vast majority of my patients will connect with us virtually first and so whether that's a click on the website or ask a question at baumanmedical.com or even a virtual consultation through Zoom, uh, we can start there. Male or female patients can begin their hair restoration journey virtually. They don't have to physically come into the office. Now, of course, when you're in the office, we can do some more detailed measurements. We can't do some of that stuff virtually. 
but I could certainly send you a microscope if you needed, if we needed that to diagnose some scalp health issues. We do that very commonly. Um, very often we can prescribe medications or uh, medical devices like low level laser light, photobiomodulation devices. We can make those suggestions in nutrition and hair care. Uh, we can connect you maybe with someone who we've trained locally in your neighborhood who can do some measurements for us. Uh, if you're lucky, there is someone in the area that has been gone, has gone through like my hair coach training. Um, and so we can start off with those, uh, you know, photos, uh, you know, and video and kind of get into what the situation or the plan might be. And many of our patients do eventually come to us for treatments, maybe a regenerative treatment like PRP or the newer therapies like PDO grow or exosome therapy. Uh, we have a new in-office treatment called TED that requires a few more interventions that requires four treatments over the course of four months. We have one treatment a month for four months. Um, but look, many of our hair transplant patients come from all over the world. We're listed as one of the top 20 clinics in the world. So many of our patients are traveling thousands of miles, many different time zones uh, to get to us. And we call that the executive hair restoration experience. You know, it used to be the hair restoration vacation that got finely tuned into a, a more luxurious uh, uh, stay and, and a little bit more of the biohacking stuff to get you healed on the back end and the front end. Um, but, you know, it's been, it's, uh, that's a great treatment uh, option for patients who are coming in from out of town who need hair transplantation. They can start out with that virtual consult, get an idea of a treatment plan, both short-term and long-term, get an understanding of what they might need in terms of a transplant, and then execute it at their leisure when they're ready. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So why don't we get into some of the clinical pearls and maybe we can talk about some of the technology you're using and the nutrients that you're using and the appropriate dietary approaches and lifestyle stuff. Maybe sort of talk about those things that you're starting to see kind of rise to the top. Yeah. So I'm um, like, I'm very, very keen, as we said before, on these lifestyle factors that could dysregulate the hair follicle. And probably today, what's on everybody's mind is stress. And so, um, you know, when you're running away from a tiger, you need that stress hormone to give you a, that extra boost and get, get the heck away. Um, but today, perceived stress is really the main killer, that persistent stress of either their job or family situation, traffic or work or things like that. Uh, economically, physiologically, all these things could affect your hair follicles. And we know that cortisol is a killer. I mean, you want the quickest thing to shut down a hair follicle in a Petri dish is cortisol. So, um, you know, if we can improve uh, someone's stress level, either through stress management skills, and I don't care how you do it, whether you do yoga or deep breathing or write poetry or go to the shooting range, whatever, whatever works for you um, is totally fine by me. But sometimes we add Things like ashwagandha, which is a, an herb that uh, has been very, very popular over the time of the pandemic to help mitigate stress. And we call that the Zen master. And that's like, you know, super easy, um, you know, just a personal story. Uh, my wife has been a much better traveler on, uh, on airplanes uh, since she started taking the ashwagandha. So, uh, and our patients as well have noticed that it improves their stress level. And of course, there's um, really good evidence now in the clinical literature of reducing cortisol levels and essentially, and as an adaptogen, making your body more resilient to the effects of stress. So, you know, that's one of the simple things that we often do, but we want to look at their nutritional intake. I mean, today, patients come in, they might be on a strict diet. Now, maybe a strict timing, they may be doing fasting, they might be doing a vegan diet. And so we want to look at biomarkers that tell us whether they are nutrient depleted or deficient. And uh, there's a lot of ways to look at that. Many people who are on what I would consider kind of a disciplined or religious uh, diet um, are missing key components. And, uh, you know, I've treated many vegans and vegetarians who are just simply protein deficient. Like, you know, let's get some protein in there. Okay. And because as I mentioned previously, your hair follicles are highly metabolic. It's the highest mitotic rate of any cell population in your entire body, more than bone marrow, more than your GI tract. And so if you're nutritionally deficient in some way, especially protein, you're not going to build good hair or you're not going to build good quality hair. It's going to be prone to breakage or it's going to become dull. And we don't, certainly don't want that because it certainly hair loses its aesthetic value when it's breaking or dull in texture. Um, I, I mean, I love to treat with uh, protein supplementation, uh, vitamins and minerals. We talk a lot about the uh, hero, which is called, which is biotin in the practice, as well as things like uh, probiotics, which are specifically geared to reduce overall body inflammation, improve nutrient absorption. And so we call those the good guys. Um, 
you know, and then appropriate scalp health, you know, scalp care. So I have developed my own hair care products. We call the Boost uh, Shampoo and Conditioner and Soothe Shampoo and Conditioner. And those have very specific ingredients to do each of the different things, as you can tell by the name. So boost hair growth or soothe the scalp or both. And then uh, what else could we do non-invasively, non-chemically? Well, photobiomodulation, red light therapy has been a part of the practice for 20 something years. And in the beginning, we didn't know how red light affected mitochondria or uh, cell uh, metabolism or circulation. But today we know improvements in blood flow and ATP production. I mean, these studies have been done and signed and sealed and the me mechanism has been completely worked out by one of my heroes of photobiomodulation, Dr. Michael Hamblin. Uh, you know, he's the photobiomodulation god uh, over there. And it's all detailed out exactly how the photoacceptor molecules in the mitochondria work and create the ATP, which is the energy currency, which makes the hair follicles produce thicker, better, stronger, healthier hair over time. So, I mean, who wouldn't use a non-chemical, non-invasive side effect free treatment like the turbo laser cap? I mean, that's our primary laser device. And uh, with a lifetime warranty, it's basically your least costly treatment over time. So it's a very nice at-home device. Hi, if you're looking to get your own photomodulation device at home, this laser turbo cap is a fantastic opportunity for you to stimulate that follicle hair growth. And Dr. Bauman has been so kind in that if you click on the link and purchase the turbo laser cap as a result of this particular promotion and this podcast, then he's going to offer you a $500 value for a completely no obligation, complimentary, private, one-on-one -on -one hair restoration consultation if you purchase that Bauman Turbo Laser Cap. So check out the link in the description below and, and take advantage of the fact that you can have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with this amazing doctor that is typically a $500 value. Now back to the podcast. That's awesome. And uh, as far as maybe get into the exosomes, because I know that's a hot new word in the world of uh, a hair restoration. So tell us exactly what that is and what it entails. Yeah, I mean, stem cell therapy has been a part of my practice and regenerative medicine has been a part of my practice for many years, 15 years. And we were very, very keen. Uh, I was not afraid of going after um, uh, harvesting stem cells from uh, autologously from a lipoaspirate. I'm a surgeon by training, so that was not a big deal for me for many, many years. And of course, the FDA uh, came in with a guidance document around 2017, uh, guiding physicians and what they felt was safe and not and so forth. And so adhering to those documents, um, basically what you see now are off-the-shelf stem cell therapy products. So exosomes are basically the secretome, which is the, the stuff that comes out of the stem cells, the instructions, if you will. And so in laboratories that are FDA approved and cleared and guided, um, these bioreactors are filled with stem cells and they're put under specific environments that create these exosomes, which are very tiny little bubbles of inflammation, basically microRNA, uh, um, cytokines, growth factors, and so forth, chemical messages by the thousands and millions and trillions, actually. And these uh, exosomes are then collected and purified. They're quantified and sterilized and frozen and then sent to us for use topically in the scalp. And so exosome therapy is essentially like stem cell therapy in a bottle. And we can apply that topically to the scalp. Um, one of the best ways to apply exosomes today is through transepidermal delivery, which is an ultrasonic device that breaks the stratum corneum layer temporarily, disrupts it and enables us to push molecules and other things through the skin without a needle and without any pain whatsoever. So that's a very, very nice treatment option. So combining the stem cell therapy, exosome therapy, which holds a lot of promise for hair growth and this transepidermal delivery system, which is usually used for growth factors and peptides, uh, combining that stuff together is really been spectacular in the practice for patients who want that stem cell therapy, but don't want to do something more invasive, like a, you know, a little minor liposuction or something like that, <laughs> or an injection. Gotcha. So is it, is it, has it gotten to the point, Alan? I mean, notwithstanding, there is a certain amount of hair loss that requires transplantation, but has it gotten to the point before that, that all of the tools that you do can, can be facilitated um, remotely or has it gotten to the point where you do the same work up through zoom and be able to um, make the recommendations with the technologies that are out there to to make huge vast uh, improvements in the follicle health and it's noticeable 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think kind of what you're asking is like, can someone who is distant from me have success with a hair restoration program or treatment? Well, obviously, if a follicle is dead and gone, I mean, that's kind of the end of the story, right? You're going to need some degree of transplantation. And sometimes you could lose a lot of coverage and not, you know, be completely bald, right? So you could have a thinning crown or a woman with a little bit of a, a, a recession or thinning in the frontal zone, and the follicles are still there. And so that's where the photos are super helpful and medical therapies can take you pretty far and at least prevent future loss. Um, if the density is truly depleted and that's, you know, it's a judgment call if it's virtual um, in the office, it's more ma mathematical actually, um, then you're going to need some degree of transplant surgery. But regardless of whether you need a transplant or not, you got to get started on some medical treatment. You know, you got to get started on something. I don't care if it's a vitamin or nutritional or doing a laser light. That's going to be helpful for sure. Let's get your uh, regimen in gear. And then we can figure out, do we need to do platelet-rich plasma, PRP treatment? Do we need to do a TED treatment with exosome therapy? Do we need something more aggressive or more invasive, uh, like a minimally invasive hair transplant? So, I mean, hair transplantation today is very different than years and years ago. It's a lot less invasive. The recovery time is super fast and comfortable. There's no real strong activity restrictions once you get out a couple of days. Uh, we care for that area very, very uh, well during that healing phase to get you completely through that healing phase of the process. And the hair growth is extremely robust. And I think it's because our, gro our growth rates are so good because of the techniques and technology that we use, but also that we're optimizing the scalp. We're optimizing you metabolically uh, for the process and for the procedure. And that's a big piece of the puzzle that most surgeons miss. Well, not only optimizing, but customizing as well, right? I mean, if someone doesn't do well or they have um, some of these genetic susceptibilities to not have particular medications work effectively for them, then you're not mm -hmm. just giving them the, the everyone gets this or everyone gets that approach. As far as I'd like to talk wow. a little bit about the, the longevity component that you've added to your practice, is this for ongoing patients that have already done the, the restoration or do you have... Um, some people that are doing that now just as 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 the, its own standalone like tell me how that fits into what you're doing you know. yeah so I mean obviously we're super excited about officially having launched Bauman performance and as I said we've been doing things in the practice addressing patients needs uh, whether it was metabolic needs and things like that uh, diagnosing underlying conditions and identifying them, trying to send them out really with guidance and not always getting such great results when they would come back from their primary care, what I consider like, you know, 2.0 medicine. Uh, we really need to take a more 3.0 holistic and, and functional approach. And that's why I added the Bauman Performance Program. So the word is spreading. It's not just the patients inside the practice now who are benefiting from this performance program, but now they're telling their friends and family and other people about how great it is and, and the results. And so people are inquiring into Bauman performance really just through word of mouth uh, and learning about what we do and how we do it. it we have a very robust intake practice, part, very uh, robust intake process. It takes um, about six or 12 weeks actually to get all the information and everything kind of uploaded into the system. And then everything is custom tailored, you know, so whether you're just interested in, you know, some just basic wellness and metabolic health, uh, or you want to get more optimized, it may include, you know, hormone optimization for those folks who are in that appropriate category, or you really want to dive down into longevity and like, you know, look out for uh, diseases of aging and cancer and heart disease and uh, metabolic disorders and, and, and so forth uh, and, and brain, uh, you know, dysfunction uh, over time. You know, we take a very, very uh, well-rounded approach to that and uh, are really on the lookout for that. So we have a lot of interesting things, you know, liquid biopsies for cancer, CCTAs for coronary artery, and obviously we're doing, you know, body composition and things like that in the practice as well. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Anything we don't do in the practice, obviously we're referring out and connecting with the local uh, diagnostic centers that can do that. But um, yeah, it's, it's been a really, really exciting part of the practice. I, you know, I, I live and breathe that myself uh, personally, you know, with my, my workout regimen and my supplement regimen and the other things that we've mentioned to optimize, uh, m you know, m my own uh, ability cognitively, physically, you know, I want to be able to ski uh, when I'm a hundred years old. I want to be able to, you know, lift up 
my grandchildren, great grandchildren over my head, you know, when I'm that age without difficulty, I want to live those extra long lives, but you know, long years, but I want to live them in a healthy way. And so I know I've got to prepare for that now. And that's kind of where, where my journey has taken me. And, and I'm trying to instill that into uh, the Bowman performance program as well. And that's where the, you know, the wellness and the optimization and the longevity pieces kind of all meet together. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how that will flourish and what kind of direction that will take your practice. Because when people come to see you, I, it's it is a very emotional connection that they have with their hair, which would probably be very correlated with having a high quality of life, enjoying the finer things, being able to be confident, being able to make lifelong memories. And if you don't have that quality, it can be very debilitating. And it would be related to the same things that would want to avoid the four horsemen's in terms of cancer, cardiovascular, metabolic, and uh, and cognitive stuff. Neurodegenerative, yeah. Neurodegenerative. Yeah, neurodegenerative. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any... Uh, are you prepared to where it might take you? <laughs> well, uh, I'm not so sure, <laughs> but um, like this journey, you know, which started 25 years ago, um, you know, will continue to to chart and map it as we go. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't have a specific goal for Bauman performance at the moment. I just want to be able to take it, take care of every patient specifically as well as we possibly can and utilize all these amazing new technologies that have really come to the forefront you know, from genetic testing to the, the technologies of, of examining the brain health and things like that. And, um, you know, one of the things that kind of led me to this is the work that we've done with Gray Team, which is a, a 501c3 nonprofit. And if we have a little bit of time, certainly we'd love to mention about how we take care of our uh, American heroes, our military veterans through that uh, that, that process and that facility here in Boca Raton. I am the medical director for that. And we bring in a lot of non-medical therapies and treatments to try to help prevent these veterans from suffering from PTSD related suicide. Many of them come back with wounds of war that are visible and some that are invisible. And, are, and many of them have difficulty kind of reintegrating back into society, whether it be with their family or their job and things like that. And it's a very, very different um, atmosphere than what they had when they were over uh, you know, serving this country and protecting our freedoms. And I think we owe it to them to be able to, to protect them in that way and to help them reintegrate and, and to optimize their health. And so we've had an interesting level of support from the biohacking community and, and health and wellness community in terms of devices and, and technologies, which has just been an outpouring of, of amazing, uh, heartwarming uh, technology and, and, and effort to help these veterans. Everything has been donated and we, we've never lost a veteran. We, we run about 30 veterans through the program every 90 days. So, you know, I don't know, six or six or 800 veterans and we've never lost one. And uh, it's a pretty interesting process that we use uh, from nutrition and fitness to these uh, photobiomodulation and, and uh, uh, photobiomodulation helmets for PTSD. We have the WAVI for EEG. We have, um, everything from happies for, uh, for relaxation to a pulse electromagnetic field for recovery and inflammation to the VEMIs, vibroacoustical and mechanical induction therapies. So really just some interesting confluence, uh, farm for sauna, we're getting a cryo, uh, you know, a bunch of different things that are happening over there. Great team. And, uh, you know, if there's anybody out there who is interested in that and they're in the field of health and wellness and would like to be involved with Gray Team, uh, I certainly invite them to go check out grayteam.org or message me directly and we can connect them there. But uh, no, taking it's... a lot of that technology and putting it into Bauman Performance, really having tested it and tried it on those military vets and knowing what the results have been over the past couple of years is really going to accelerate our program of Bauman performance. It's really military grade, which is kind of cool. Right. It really is. You know, it's, it, it's amazing because you mentioned about uh, medicine 3.0. And I think that your, your field and specialty is, is definitely unique in the way that you work up a patient and look at all the different factors and what the protocol is going to be or the strategy. But in reality, all of the same methodology should be applied to just healthcare in general. I guess the question would be how quick or slow do you see that transition into 3.0 in all fields? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it's going to be patient demand that's going to uh, drive that uh, as we see that there's been a lot of investment in uh, dollars to get outside of the traditional care. So whether it's, you know, 
the veterans who are dealing with the VA, which is kind of the lowest common denominator with big pharma, big government, everything else going along there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, that's what we're doing a great team. Obviously, you can see the, the, the proliferation of concierge uh, programs, uh, the uh, X prize for longevity. I mean, there's a lot of movement in this part of the industry. And so, and it's something I've seen for many, many years, as I mentioned earlier in our conversation, I've been a member of the American Academy of Anti- American Academy of Anti-Aging since 1998. So I've seen this, um, you know, what people thought was kind of a hokey, you know, field, if you will. And I saw it as the primordial goo of medicine 3.0, though we didn't know to call it that at the time. Um, We didn't even have a a clinical trial or published paper that showed that you could extend lifespan for at least the first 10 to 15 years that I was in that field uh, or attending those conferences. And it's only been very recently that we've shown that there are interventions that can extend lifespan in, uh, you know, in animals and insects and so forth, uh, and hopefully now going to be uh, some proven uh, results in humans as well. So we'll see where it takes us. I think as anything, everything else, I'm, uh, you know, I'm kind of a consumer capitalist, so we'll see that the, the consumer will, will demand this kind of uh, 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 care. And if they're not getting it where they're at, then um, there'll be a push to change or to get outside of that system, you know, I don't know how it's going to work, but, um, you know, I think there's no question that the explosion of interest in the medical field from the, you know, whether you see the, these anti-aging and longevity medical conferences, what used to be, like I say, hokey is now mainstream. So it's no joke. Uh, this stuff is here. It's now, it's just not equally distributed, but, uh, you know, we're trying to bring it to Boca Raton. That's where I'm at. No, it's great. It's, it is spreading like wildfire. And I think with AI and just how fast and in, 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 I guess our, our knowledge base grows, it's get out of the way or work with it, you know, to be able to harmonize. And I think there are sacred cows that will be knocked down, but consumer demands will dictate where things go. And I think when third party reimbursement understands how they can harness this for for um, a win-win situation, it's, it will be remains to be seen how how quick or slow that happens. But people like you leading the way is is definitely um, encouraging. Uh, Alan, sure. as far as one of the questions we ask our guests is, given you know so much and um, you've made changes, you sort of practice what you preach, and you have the integrity to want the people that you help do the same thing that you recommend that you're doing yourself. So I guess with that being said, what would you have told the younger version of yourself, what you didn't know then that you know now that might have uh, accelerated your curve or implemented a strategy that would have been uh, useful back then? What, What do you think that would have been? Yeah. So, I mean, as I said, you know, my health journey was not like a 180 uh, turnaround. Um, And, you know, sometimes when you're younger, you feel like, wow, you know, you don't need all of this extra effort or energy. Things are going great and you feel great. You've got all this extra energy and and metabolism and everything else is going along well. And then, you know, middle age hits you and, you know, it's not just hair loss, but, uh, you know, like I said, a waistline expanding and and, uh, you know, and body aches and pains from literally, you know, from doing surgery every single day, just as an example, I had, um, you know, muscle aches and pains in my shoulders and my back and and, in my forearms, actually, from actually physically doing the work. And I guess when I first had that, the only thing I knew to take care of it was with massage therapy and massage therapy was kind of a a bandaid on the situation. So what I would tell my younger self from like, you know, let's say 20 years ago, is start building more muscle because as soon as I realized, and it was years later until I started, you know, literally doing, you know, a more resistance training type of workout more than just body weight, did all those aches and pains go away. And so, you know, I felt like I was kind of taking care of it. Okay. But I really improved in terms of my physical ability to actually do the work that I love to do, which is the surgery. Um, to such a dramatic degree, once I started to build a little bit of muscle and I'm not, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking to become the Hulk or, you know, whatever, but, um, you know, uh, resistance training is really, really important for that. So I would encourage if you're a surgeon, um, you know, you would never think, oh, I got to lift weights to do surgery, but I I did (laughs) actually, it improved my surgery like a lot. And, um, you know, building a little bit of muscle mass improved my stamina with the surgical procedures that I did. 
And so that's like the number one thing I probably would tell my younger self, like, you know, just start doing some resistance training earlier. And you probably could have avoided all that time, um, you know, just trying to put a Band-Aid on it with massage therapy. And uh, the other thing I would tell my younger self is that meditation is not hard. Um, you know, you just, you just have to find the right way to access that state of mind. And so today we have all kinds of electronics and wearables and, and biofeedback and, uh, you know, experts that you can connect with over the internet to help you breath work, to set the mind in motion, but really getting into that state of relaxation and, and activating your parasympathetic state, uh, to kind of cool down the, 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 the high intensity, you know, daily life activities for me has been really, really important and more important to me than like even taking a long vacation is just being able to really rejuvenate and recover mentally and physically with short bursts of time. And so those are the, I guess those are the main things that I would tell my younger self, uh, you know, that you can do it. You can do that. I mean, I'm, I'm not like a meditator, but I, you know, I, I have those times where I can, I can, you know, turn things off and focus internally. And I, that's helped me a lot in terms of mental clarity and, uh, and, and precision in thought. So, you know, oh, those are great you know, but mind and mind and body. Those are the two ends of the spectrum, I guess. And that's where I would, that's what I would tell my younger self. No, that's great. And I think that can apply to everyone. Alan, I went to a metabolic health summit in Santa Barbara last year, and I was really impressed with, I mean, they had, um, Brett again there, and they had uh, Lustig there. So there's big names there. And they were presenting, one of the presenters was, um, he is a MD um, CSCS. And CSCS is a certified strength and conditioning specialist. And in my past life, I used to have that. And these are the people that are the strength and conditioning coach for the Miami Dolphins. That's what that the CSCS mm. is. So it's a big, it's a big um, certification. And um, they were presenting a study on uh, cancer patients and how they improve their outcomes by having them work out. Um, but the thing was that it wasn't just the sit on the leg extension and do leg extensions or leg curls and just the, you know, the, the 1980 workouts, but it was actually, they were having these women doing deadlifts and squats and, you know, real movement. So I would also add that yeah. to what you're saying as well is it's not just lifting weights per se, but it's the real compound movements that even if they're doing for cancer patients, you could do for yourself because it's that important. The, the other thing I would say is we, when we do genetic test interpretation, one of the genes, there is such a gene, it's the oxytocin receptor gene. And if you put in the RSID number into um, the NIC to see if it's been researched, it is considered the empath gene. So we don't actually know if it's upregulated or downregulated, but we know that people that have one or two copies of this are going to be more empathic people. So they, I say they have this antenna sticking out of their head and all these frequencies of the world and COVID and their friends and all that information is coming in and it's really causing sort of kicking up of the ocean floor and all the excitability and neurotransmitters. And, and what my recommendation to them is not so much the meditation, but it's doing what they find purposeful, what their mission is. Um, and I think you do that every day with what you do um, because you're, you love what you do. It's evident and the learning, I don't think there's one aspect that isn't intriguing to you. And I think if there's a way to harness for the person who's listening at that very thing, whether it's hugging your dog, going out into nature, um, spending time with loved one, but oxytocin is the hug drug, the connection drug, the purpose drug, and it really puts the brakes on the parasympathetic system or something called NADPH oxidase enzyme that just causes massive amounts of activation of mast cells and histamine. So there's a real science to it. And I think you alluded yeah. to it, not with just meditation, but with doing what it is that makes you who you are. Would, would you agree on that? Or would you have anything else? That, yeah. No, a hundred percent. So, you know, things that excite me, going to conferences, learning new things, seeing new equipment, new procedures, uh, learning about the latest technology. And I'll go to, you know, the World Stem Cell Summit. I'll go to A4M, AMMG. I've been to MCAS with plastic surgeons in, uh, in Paris, 16,000 doctors attend that. Uh, you know, obviously international side of hair restoration surgery, but I try to get outside of my hair box, if you will, to try to get an idea of what's going on out there. 
and, and to really cross pollinate. And that's really how I built uh, these add-ons to the practice. It wasn't a hair surgeon that taught me how to do PRP. In fact, those guys were the last to uh, implement PRP. It was an orthopedic surgeon, you know, and orthobiologics have been around a long time. So learning those things have really been exciting for me, adding them into the practice and building something, you know, building my, my practice in the business has always been fun. Uh, the surgical aspect is a state of flow for me. So I do a lot of thinking around the time that I'm creating the artistic representation of the, of the hair, you know, literally like hair by hair implantation, the stroke of my hand determines the angle, the orientation of position and doing that really it's artistic, artistic work with the microsurgery uh, for me is, is where I enter into a state of flow. And it's usually uh, not a time where I'm having an in-depth conversation with the patient, although sometimes I, you know, we can and, and do, um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very rewarding to do all of those different things. And I'm just feel very blessed that, you know, my dad told me, uh, it was an ancient Chinese proverb, I guess, if you, uh, or maybe a Mark Twain, uh, if you find something you like to do, you never have to work a day. You know, I don't know if that was a Greek philosopher or Mark Twain, one of those, but, um, you know, he, he taught me that at a very young age, he thought, and I thought it was him, his quote, but, uh, um, right. but that's, you know, that, that's, I've, I've, I've gotten followed that. And even from the very beginning, when I learned about hair transplant surgery, um, you know, I really took a leap of faith that this was something that uh, I loved and that I was going to make work, even though there wasn't really a path that I could follow. There wasn't a playbook, if you will. And so I uh, just kind of set the goal and then move forward and, and obstacles kind of, you know, fell by the wayside as I moved forward with it. No, it's a great it's a great lesson for those that are listening to this that are dealing with hair loss and they have a lot of stress in their life and they're looking for the magic formula, but yet they haven't connected to what their purpose and passion is and how much that plays a role in calming down the inflammatory response and indirectly impacting the follicle health. So um, you can see why Bauman Medical stands alone in what it does. Uh, as far as how do how do we learn about where you are, what we what you do, if they want to get in contact with you, what's the best approach to do that? Yeah, well, the, the best place to start is baumanmedical.com, B-A-U-M-A-N medical.com is the website that I built, you know, starting back in uh, the 1990s. And I've written uh, thousands and thousands of pages of information there. So it's a great place to learn about what we do, what we used to do, what we're going to do, and what we're currently doing. And it's also a great place to get your questions answered. I mean, literally, you can go to baumanmedical.com slash ask and ask me anything, and we'll get an answer to you. And you can also schedule a consultation and start your hair registration journey from there. Obviously, I'm also on uh, most social media platforms, all of them. Uh, you can always follow me and, and connect with me there if you would like. And uh, I look forward if you're, you know, to helping you if you're out there and you've got a hair loss situation and you felt hopeless or you thought that there wasn't effective treatment options out there or, you know, a, a, a friend said, oh, go to Turkey and get it fixed. You know, I, I would just caution you that medical tourism has a lot of pitfalls. And so if you would like to stay safe and get a nice aesthetically pleasing result or at least just an effective and holistic treatment plan you know, let's have a discussion about it and start that journey at baumanmedical.com. And I look forward to helping you. Awesome. Well, I mean, I think if they listen to this, they see all that goes into the workup. And from the moment they call and the and the bonding and the concern and the caring to figuring out what the best solution is, isn't just a matter of a plug and play or just do this and that and that's it. That's all. So thank you so much for your time. I'm, I'm super excited to have interviewed you. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And uh, I appreciate all that you do, Alan. And uh wish you nothing but future success with everything that you do, especially with your new longevity program and the, the great team and, and everything else in between. Thanks, Joel. I really, really appreciate it. It's been great to be with you. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Hi, thank you so much for watching our Age Reversing Blueprint podcast. If you've made it this far, we sincerely thank you for your attention and your interest in reversing your age. If you're looking to get more information on today's topic or other podcasts that we've had, be sure to check out the show notes and be sure to check out drjoelrosen.com. Have an awesome day.